What's up guys, how's it going? It's Alex over at Laser Everything and we're doing something really cool today. We're actually gonna get into one of my geeky little hobbies. So in this box here on the desk, I've got a really special item. I'm gonna tell you guys all about it. This is the Ambernic RG35 XX SP and it is a Game Boy Advance SP clone and it runs emulators. You can play old school games on this, which is actually one of my like, when I'm not doing lasers, I, I really like messing with emulators. It's a lot of fun for me, but I have this one for a really specific reason. One of the developers that makes the custom firmware for this device called Mustard OS, his name is Corey, and he wanted to get the Mu OS logo right on the front of this. Of course, I'm a huge fan of this idea and a huge fan of the device and the operating system. So I immediately reached out to him and told him to send it over. So Corey was nice enough to let us experiment on this today. But there are a couple things we need to be aware of. Kyle likes to remind me regularly, pretty much all injection molded plastic parts are ABS. And that's a big laser engraving no-no. It's actually on our material safety sheet database that we keep uh, as something that you should really not be engraving. And we're making a special exception today because we have the UV. One of the benefits of the UV laser is that we can apply really low amounts of power to materials like this without getting them up to the temperature that they need in order to become dangerous. It's still dangerous, and I really, really don't recommend you trying this at home. Nobody should be engraving ABS ever for any reason, and today we're breaking the rules. That said, Corey is relying on me and this is a really cool project. So I'm super excited to get started on it. If you wanna tag along, definitely do so. It's gonna be a great learning experience, if nothing else. But remember, everything in today's video is for educational purposes only. How was that for an intro? So here's the box Corey sent over guys. And before we get too into getting the design all set up and getting light burn set up to actually mark this, uh, we need to just take some measurements really quick. So I figured I'd do that here since it's pretty easy. It's a nice small device, which means we'll be able to use our 110 lens, which is great news. Always the smaller the lens, the better the result for just about everything. And uh, that looks like a nice 84 millimeters right on the dot. You can see that there, uh, solid 84. And then let's just get this top measurement here. And this is gonna be really simple to build in Lightburn, guys. It's just a, it's just a straight up box. There's not a lot of user error that's going to take place while we are marking this today. Pretty much dead simple. And it looks like we're getting a 72 millimeter height on this bad boy, and that's perfect. There's not a ton of room to engrave on the back of this. It's just riddled with screws and the Ambernic information that they print on there, but uh, we've got plenty of space on that front cover, and I think we're gonna be able to do something nice for Corey today. So with those measurements taken, Let's head over and draw something up with the files we sent over. All right, guys, we're at the desk and we have a specific request for this project. So we're going to have to do a little bit of Illustrator prep before we get started. So we're going to go ahead and get Illustrator open. It's in our Adobe folder. And I will walk you guys through what the customer wants. You'll get a little mini artwork tutorial out of today's episode too. We're just preparing a vector. So we'll just start a new file. This is pretty easy to set up. I'm gonna do my normal five by three. We'll hit create. And we're gonna size everything right here in Illustrator so we don't need to worry about it once we get into Lightburn. To get started, I am gonna move this off of the white artboard because I can make it difficult to see what we're actually sending to Lightburn. Here we can see this is filled. I don't particularly like that. So just shift clicking up here in our fill box and clicking none. We'll get rid of that. And we've got our square outline here, but we need to make sure it's the right size. Even though my Illustrator file is in inches, we can type metric into this. So if you recall, we had 84 millimeters wide by 72 millimeters tall. And there is our workspace. And again, the operating system is called Mustard OS or Mu OS for short. They were kind enough to send over an SVG. So we're not going to have to do a lot of work as far as getting their logo in there. That one I'm just going to open up and drag over. And once this is in, we can again shift click on the fill here and we're just going to select black. 
We'll resize this to get it to fit in the space here. That looks about right. We'll come back in and tweak this in a second, but there is a second asset that we need to prepare. Corey wants Mustard OS inside of the classic Nintendo oval here. So we're going to steal the oval uh, just so that we're getting the right shape. And then I've actually found a pretty cool font in order to get the custom text in there. It's called RO Sprite Do Semi Bold Beta which is pretty crazy, but if you type Nintendo into fontspace.com, it'll come right up. And this font should do really nicely. He wants something nostalgic, so I think this will fit the bill. From here, we can just trace the Nintendo image, expand, right-click, ungroup. We're gonna deselect the whole thing and grab some of the white, select same fill color. You guys have seen me do this many times. We're just going to hit the delete key on the keyboard to get rid of that white and then any offending recognizable trademark that's going to go away and we're going to grab our text tool here and just create a new text item we're going to type mustard os and we'll select that and we're just going to find that new font so that was called ro sprite there it is Excellent. We're just going to resize this so it fits well inside of our oval. And that's pretty cool. I think that's the look he's going for. I'm pretty happy with how that looks, actually, without having to do much to it, if anything. Uh, we'll come to Object, Expand, OK. Just going to group that text together. We'll select both and center it. And this is our new asset. So we'll shrink this down and we just want to get these to look nice together. Remember, this is going on the lid of that game system. So we don't want it to be too crowded. Typically when you see this kind of logo style on a classic Nintendo device, it's pretty small. It's not like a giant thing. It's, it's more subtle. So I think, and right up at the front here should be really good. Let's make sure this is all centered up. I think we can go just a little bit bigger with this. I thought we could go like center center, but I don't think we'll have enough space for that logo at the bottom. So I think something like this looks pretty good. I'm just making sure to keep this distance more or less equal to this distance. And this is positioned for nostalgic purposes. So with that done, I've got our little proof here and I'm actually gonna just screenshot this and send it to Corey real quick to make sure that he's happy with it before we permanently mark his device. Okay guys, we're back and uh, here is Corey's response. Looks amazing, absolutely perfect. So we've nailed it digitally, now we just need to nail it on the UV on the first try without knowing what settings we're gonna use. So uh, I think we can pull it off, but we know the artwork is at least good. We're starting from a, a positive place. So with that, we're gonna do file, save as, and I'm gonna go ahead and just save this to the desktop. And uh, I'm so used to doing Illustrator version eight for EasyCAD, but we don't have to do that. We're using Lightburn today. Illustrator 2020 is fine. Let's hit save. We can close all of this down. And from here, uh, it's just a matter of dropping this AI file into Drive and opening it over on the laser computer. So we're gonna go do that next and I will see you guys at the laser. All right guys, Corey literally just got this. So when we're marking it, we are just putting down a little bit of felt uh, cause we wanna protect it. It's literally brand new and we don't wanna leave any marks on this that we aren't intending to, but here we are on the UV laser from Mactron. It's a five watt UV and we're using the 110 lens today. But before we get started with marking it, we do have a couple things we need to take care of inside a light burn. Okay guys, we are at the little mobile laser marking station here. I'm gonna launch light burn. Let's just do a quick version check because I was out of date in the office and we are up to date here. Let's make sure we select our UV laser before we get started. We're using the 110 lens. And we're gonna come up here to the top left corner and import a file. 
All right, we're just going to navigate to the desktop, and we've got our Mustard OS AI file that we just made right here. We're going to hit open, and as you can see, we're having a little bit of an issue. That's just because our outline is uh, a solid fill color from the last time we were using it. Let's go ahead and set that to line. In fact, if Kyle was here, he'd probably be yelling at me that I'm not setting it to a tool path. So we'll go ahead and set that to a tool path. There we go. Next, we're going to grab our artwork. I like to use blue for fill. So I'm going to set that to blue. You can see it's already set to fill. And I guess the next thing we should do here, guys, is line this sucker up. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and set our artwork output to off. And we've got our tool path here. So we can go ahead and frame this up and take a look at what this is going to look like. Except we're not going to do that because I didn't turn the UV laser on. We're disconnected, as we can see right here. So let's go ahead and get that powered on. Simple fix, guys. The laser is ready, and now we can frame. Remember, guys, an important part of the framing process is making sure that you're in focus. So if we move this under the lens here and we test it really quick, you can see not even close. So we're just going to make a quick adjustment. If we're not in focus, whatever we frame onto our uh, projection area is not going to be the right size, and that'll be a problem. So let's get that fixed. And with a little editing magic, our focus is now spot on. We are perfectly focused with the lens there. That looks really good. So now we can trust our frame. So here in the frame menu, guys, uh, we're just gonna do contour. We only want the outermost stuff. You can also check outside shapes only. All that really matters is that our measurements that we took earlier, that box lines up with the game system. And that's gonna be pretty easy to tell. So now that we're in focus, we can go ahead and just move the system underneath the light there. And it is a little bit dim, so I'm probably going to turn the studio lights off just so that you guys can get a better view of this as we're lining it up. I've never been able to use this before, and I'm so excited about it. So literally all the lights in the studio are out right now. Luckily, we have uh, infrared on the broadcast cameras. Uh, but I've got the R6 here, and I want to show you guys what it looks like when I'm looking at it. The UV is not only difficult to see, but we're also shining it at a silver piece of plastic. It's really reflective, so make sure that you're using eye safety. I've got the KTIs right here from No IR. I don't even think they make these anymore, but the DBYs are a good alternative. So if you need UV protection, you can check those out. We have a link in the buying guide, but let's take a look at what our frame looks like. So here it is, guys. It's just now showing up. You can see just how dark it is in the shop here, but we have this pretty much centered. I had to do it without a camera in my hand uh, because it is a little fragile, but there you can see we've got a nice strong outline right there. It works its way all the way up and around the game system and comes back down the other side. So definitely very cool, if not a little annoying, but we're done. We did it. This looks great. So from here, we just need to decide on some settings and we can go ahead and move forward. So let's take a look at settings here. I'm going to go ahead and click close. And if we open up our speed and power settings here, we've got our standard UV kind of setup. First off, Q-Pulse with 200 nanoseconds. That's never going to work. That's a fiber setting from the last time we were using light burn and the uh, the blue fill color here on my source which is an ingu source generally the higher the pulse width the more power you are going to see delivered uh, onto the material that's the right way by the way a longer pulse delivers more energy that said if you have an inverted pulse width you can just flip-flop the number so typically we'll see them from like 1 to 16 or 1 to 30 so if I'm using 30 here, you'd want to use one. Uh, this is one of the reasons why there isn't a universal UV library. It can be very hard to convert settings, but I'm going to do the best I can with my source today. I think something like 16 nanoseconds, that's like 50%, will do very nicely. I'm also going to set the frequency here to 16. Generally, again, the higher this number goes for me, the more power we're seeing output by the machine. It may be different from your source, especially if you're using a JPT, like the Seal or the Lark. So do not just copy my settings here because these could very well not work 
for you. For speed, we want to go pretty fast. We can always slow this down in a second pass. What I don't want to do is ablate a bunch of this ABS. It's really not going to be good for us to breathe in at all. Uh, we, we just want to barely mark the surface. I think I'm going to start this at around a thousand. Again, it may not be the right setting, but we can always reduce our speed for a second pass. We do only have one shot at this and I don't want to take any risks. So we're going to start at a thousand millimeters a second here. As for line interval, we know with the UV we get about a thousand DPI, something like 0 0.025 should be great for this project. And I am a cross hatch guy, I just am. So we're going to use a scan angle of 45 with a bi-directional fill and the cross hatch turned on. I'm going to turn flood fill off for this project because it can be a little unpredictable. Of course, it is useful in a lot of different situations, but when we only again have one shot at something, I'm trying to remove variables here and flood fill adds quite a few of them. We also want to pay attention to how we're going to fill our shapes, uh, fill all shapes at once, groups together or shapes individually. We're trying to keep heat at a minimum, especially because we are marking ABS. We want things to stay as cool as possible during this process and fill all shapes at once is going to help us do that. The reason why that works is because when we use fill all shapes at once, we have to cover more area across the entire image before the jump occurs and we work our way back. So by the time we're coming back down on the backstroke, the material that we marked when we were going across the first time has already had time to cool before the other direction of the bi-directional fill comes down to mark that same area again. Something like fill shapes individually will fill each of these tiny little shapes one by one, and that keeps the heat and the beam in a much more concentrated area for a longer period of time. So fill all shapes at once is going to help us keep things nice and cool. From here, guys, as much as I hate to say it, the rest is a guess and check. So we're going to run these settings right here and do our best to make sure that we don't breathe in any of these nasty fumes. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to turn output for our graphic back on, and we'll go ahead and frame it up one more time just to make sure we like what we're seeing. There's a couple things we want to make sure we do when we're marking ABS. And again, I don't condone marking ABS. This is a naughty thing that we're doing right now. If you're going to do it, the UV is the laser for the job. Yes, the UV can do it. You have to keep things as cool as possible. As a precaution, I'm using my 3M respirator with fresh filters. We're also going to make sure that our exhaust is extremely close to the object that we are marking. And we're going to make sure that we don't have any other open ends down the line that could be blowing that exhaust back into the room. You have to be really careful with this stuff, guys. Again, I'll leave a link in the description so you can read more about what ABS gives off in a potentially dangerous situation. Right now, there are definitely people in the comments talking about how I am being oversensitive and that it's not that big of a deal and you only are in danger if X or if Y doesn't really matter to me guys i'd rather be safe than sorry so we're taking every precaution and if you do attempt this which i don't recommend i suggest you take every precaution as well before we get too crazy guys i am just amping our exhaust up to max here and i'll walk you over here so you can see this setup we've got the exhaust fan literally uh right i mean like right on it we do just want to make sure that we're not blocking any of this laser light from the corner here uh, from the top of the hosing and it doesn't look like we are i'm still really happy with that lineup so that is a rock solid test but from here guys i'm going to throw my mask on i'm going to get my laser safety goggles on to protect my eyes and we're going to take a shot at this and see how it does
I definitely think that that ablated, but we're not gonna know until we get the lights back on and check it out. We probably hit it a little too hard, but the good news is it looks really pretty. It's a nice engraving, so uh, glad we wore the mask today. Let's get the lights on, air the place out, and uh, we'll see how we did. Okay guys, the lights are back on and there was definitely an odor that yelled, hey, don't breathe me, I'm nasty, when I took my mask off. We gave it a couple minutes to air out, it feels better. We definitely ablated it, but the good news here is that um, ablating it looked nice, so at least we got a pretty engraving. But please, I know I've said it enough this episode, uh, be careful if you ever attempt to do something like this. Uh, enough about that though, let's check out the final result. All right guys, so here it is, it's completely untouched. And I have just a microfiber cloth here, and there's our final mark. I mean, wow, that looks really good. We're just gonna brush off some of that extra dust that's collected on the surface there, and take a look at that. Um, you cannot hope for a much better mark than that. It's actually not really that ablated. Uh, it's it's. I don't think if my eyes were closed, I would I would be able to feel that at all. It's uh it's very very shallow mark, uh, but man, it looks great. We got kind of like a gray on there. I was expecting something more like a white. Um, so I think we could have lowered our power output a little bit and uh, done something a little brighter. But I'm actually with the reflection with the way that silver plastic reflects. I'm actually a pretty big fan of the gray. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of glad we got that. I think it was a little bit of a happy accident there, and uh, yeah, that's just that's just too cool. So uh, there you go, Corey. I hope you like it, bro. Um, I certainly enjoyed making it. I hope that we get to customize something else for you. And to everybody on the Mustard OS Discord, uh, who's next? Let me know. Shoot me your handheld, and we will get it done. But that's it for this project, guys. Let's go ahead and wrap up the episode. And there you have it, guys. That's all I've got for this one, I think. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We got to engrave something really cool today, and uh, we got to do it in a really cool way. I'm super stoked on that IR footage. But I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Laser Everything. I sure had fun making it. I hope that I get to do more of these in the future. If you guys got value out of this one, don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content is good and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time we upload an episode. If you really love the episode, don't forget to support us. We are a viewer supported channel and we need every single one of you guys in order to continue doing what we love here at Laser Everything. If you want to support us, you can find out all of the ways that you can do so at lasereverything.net slash support, especially if you need help with laser engraving. If you want to do this and you don't know where to get started or you're struggling to get started with new equipment, the Laser Master Academy is the absolute best place for you to go. We've got tons of bonus live streams and bonus episodes of the podcast, as well as a bunch of other goodies like guided courses to help you get started with your new laser. While we offer the crash courses for free on the YouTube channel, the Laser Master Academy has a bunch of extras like audio lessons, written lessons, and self-paced assessments to help you get going in the right direction quickly. Anyway guys, I think that's all I've got for this one. Seriously, I need to go get this back out into the mail for Corey. Thanks again, Corey, for letting me experiment on your SP. And I've got this itch to play Spyro the Dragon all of a sudden. So I'm gonna go do that, but I will see you in the next one.